So the topic is adding vectors graphically. This marker makes some noise, I can hear it. And after we finish with that, we'll add vectors using trig. Trig obviously is more accurate, but for now we'll practice how we do them graphically. So let's say I have two vectors, vector A, which has a value of 15 angle 25, and I want to add to it vector B, weren't you sitting here before? I was, but I was just pointing Oh, okay. You probably going to need the protractor on the way. Okay. Vector B, which is what? Um, we'll say 10 angle, I don't know, 82. Oh. Actually, I wrote this horrible the way I wrote it. Vector A. That's all right. I want to say vector B and find A plus B. So I'll go like this. B equals, I have two vectors. Vector A equals that. Vector B equals this. Find A plus B. Find A plus B. Is it focus? Okay. So notice I'm in the first quadrant, so when I do my graph paper, maybe you want to do most of it, actually, most of this to be in the first quadrant. Here we go. I want to get as much room as possible in the first quadrant. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is graph vector A. Vector A is 15 units long at 25 degrees. Let's find out where the 25 degree direction is. So take your protractor. And again, with the graph paper, they should line up on the zero and the 90 degrees perfectly. There we go. And let's find out where the 25 de degree direction. That looks like right there. In that direction. Down there. 20, 30, 25 is right on this line. So now the length of this vector is going to be 15. If I use a scale one for one, I got to make this 15 inches long or 15 centimeter long. That's going to be a long vector. Then I'm going to add to a, tw a 10. I'm going to be off the paper. So maybe what I'm going to do use a scale one centimeter for two units. I can use any scale. So I'm using a scale here of one centimeter for two units. So the 15 is going to be how long than the 15? Seven and a half. So let's make this vector seven and a half centimeters long.
That's vector A, which has a value of 15 at an angle 25. So the angle is 25, and the length of it is 15 units long. Now, where the tip of this vector ended, I'm going to draw another x and y axis right there from the tip of it. Notice there's a, I'm using a pencil because this is like where it doesn't really exist there, but I'm going to pretend there's an x and y axis right there. At the tip of that vector. Can you see it? I drew another x and y axis right at the tip of that vector. And let me draw vector b from that point. What's vector B equal to? Here we go. It is at 80 degrees. Let's see where the 80, uh, was it 80 degrees? 82. The direction at 82 degrees. This is 80, 81, 82. In that direction. Can you see where the 82 is? And what's the length of this vector should be if we use the scale of one for two units? Five. five. The length of that should be five units long. So let me point it upward here. Going from the tip of this one. And I want it to be five units long. So let's draw this five units. And this is vector B. This is vector A, this is vector B. You adding them, plus. So what's the result, what's the answer? The result is gonna be a vector from the origin to the tip of the last one. So that's what the result is. That's what the sum of them is going to be. And if you look at the length of that on mine, it looks like how many centimeters? On mine, it looks like 11 centimeters. Does it look like 11 on yours? Yeah. Well, the scale is what? Two units for one centimeter. So, no, this is 11 centimeter. Each centimeter is equivalent to two units. So the length of that will be what? 22 units, right? Each centimeter is two units. And what's the angle? Let's measure that final angle. That's the direction it's gonna be going. And the direction it looks like it, what? 51, 52, 50, between 53 and 54 degrees. Is that what you got? I'm sorry, more than that, 45, 46, 47 roughly, or 48? Anyone get that number? Somewhere between 47 and 48 degrees. So if you add the two vectors, the result is 22 at an angle of 47. We'll do the math shortly. We'll see if we're right with the math or not, you know? Let's do another one.
we have vector A, which could be an airplane flying, small plane, at a speed of 120 miles per hour, going in the direction of 120 degrees. There's an airplane. Vector W, which is the wind, happens to be a gusty day like today outside. I guess it's supposed to be windy. I see the trees blowing. The wind is blowing at 40 degrees, I mean uh, 40 miles per hour at an angle, I don't know, somebody pick any number you want between 0 and 360. Which way you want the wind blowing? 80. Okay. I was about to put it like in the third, fourth quarter. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. How about? Okay. 180. Okay. You want to do 180? That's fine. Again, the 120 is too big. I need a sheet of paper massive. So maybe I'll use a scale here. My scale is going to be what? Maybe one centimeter is equal to 10 units. So the 120 is going to be how big? 12. And the 40 is going to be how big? 4. It looks like, notice this is we're in the second quadrant. See this one here? 120 is more, I mean the angle is 120 is more than 90 degrees. That's in the second quadrant. And this is 180 between second and third. So my graph is going to be in the second quadrant, most of it. So let me put my y-axis right there and just use the rest of the paper on the left. If you need more graph paper, just grab some. I got more here too, next to me. So I want to find A, let's do this, A minus B instead of a plus. I changed my mind. Minus. In math, if we have subtraction, isn't that you can write that as A plus negative B? Isn't that what subtraction is? So if you have 5 minus 3, you can write that 5 plus a negative 3. <coughs> so we'll see what that means, the subtraction. So the first vector, vector A, is not changing. 120 degrees. Let's find out where the 120 is. The 120 looks like in this direction. That's the 120. So let's draw a vector that's 12 units long in that direction. 12 centimeters long. This is vector A. Now, let's put another set of axes with my pencil here, right at the tip of this one. I use a pencil because this is just really not part of the picture, but you need that to guide you. Now B is what? 180, which direction? Isn't 180 to the left of this line? But wait a minute, this is subtraction. We said that's the same as adding the opposite to 180. What's the opposite to this direction then?
we should be going which way? If I was just adding them, if I was adding B, which is in this direction, I just throw B in that direction. But this is a subtraction, which means add the opposite to that. And the opposite to that will be a vector going backward. Not in direction B, because B is actually this way. This is where B is. B will be this vector if I was adding B, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to use this. I'm just showing you what B is. This is B. I don't want B. I want negative B, so it has to point backward. Negative B will be pointing in that direction. Change the direction by 180 degrees. So this is negative B. So what's my net result? What's my equivalent? My equivalent is from the starting point to the final point, which is that one. So this is actually my result, the, s the subtraction of them. And it looks like I'm getting about 10 and a half. Let me know if you got about 10 and a half. The scale is 1 equals to 10, so 10 and a half times 10, which is what? Is that 105? And what's the angle? Let's measure that angle. And that looks like about 100 degrees. The red line, 100 degrees. So that's what A minus B is. 105 at 100 degrees. So again, if this is a plane and you're going from this here, you plan to go to that airport and you put the plane in that direction, the wind is blowing. So it's constantly pushing you to the right. You're not gonna end up there. You're gonna end up right here. Notice your speed because the wind is really facing you. It's headwind. If there was no wind, you'd be going 120 miles per hour. Instead, I'm going what? 105 miles per hour. I'm slower. So when they try to estimate when is the plane going to get from Bradley Airport or from Boston Airport to New York Airport, they have to look at that speed, not what the engine is telling the instrument is telling them. That means nothing. That's the speed. And where is it going to land? It's not landing at JFK here. This is Boston to JFK. If you point in that direction, you're landing in LaGuardia Airport. We got a little problem there. They weren't expecting you there. Suddenly you're going, I'm low on fuel, I need to land there. And people have connectors there trying to go somewhere else. Well, you're in trouble now. You got to get back to Kennedy, JFK there, and get your connector. So they have to figure things out. They have to point the plane in that direction and let the wind push them in that direction. We okay with that one? Okay. Let's see how we do them mathematically. So how do we add vectors mathematically? I'm going to write the steps for adding vectors mathematically. So adding vectors using trig. I'll write it down here. You know what? I don't like the graph paper to write on. So I'll just use this. Adding vectors using trig, trigonometric. For me, step number one, write the vectors. What do I mean by write the vectors? These will give you the vectors. When I say write the vectors, I mean the angle 
must be, if you want to be correct, must be measured with respect to positive x-axis. That's step number one. Step number two, you'll see me in a minute, I make a table and the table lets you know what each piece is. Find the x and y component for each vector. The way you find the x component, we did that last class, that's r times what? Cosine theta. And the way you find the y component is what? r sine theta. Step number three, add all the x and y components. You don't add them together. You add all the x's to get one number. We add all the y component to get one number. What we're going to have is what we call the result in the x direction and the result in the y direction. The result in the x direction, if you know from math, this means sum, add. Add the x component. The result in the y direction, you add all the y components. If you took um, Excel, you know that means summation, right? Auto sum means add them. That's what that sigma is. So you add all the x component, all the x numbers, you make one number out of it, it's called r sub x, the result in the x direction. Then you get the result in the y direction. So you have the x and y component. And the last step, now you need to get r and theta because you're adding two vectors to get a third vector. You have the third vector, but you have the components for it. I don't want the components. I want the real vector. Is it 20 angle 30? So step number four, find r and theta. How do you find r? We did that last class or last video. It's the square root of the x component squared and the y component squared. And how do you find theta? It's the inverse tangent of the y over the x. Now a little hint here, must add 180 degrees if the result vector is in quadrant two or three. If you're in quadrant two or three, you have to add 180 degrees. <coughs> Keep looking. For me, it doesn't look like it's focus. So let's take the two problems we did there, just to see if we did them right. And what I find the easiest thing for me to do is I make a table. That reminds me with all the pieces I need to do. So I'm going to add these two vectors first. The good news is these vectors are written correctly, the angle with, re with respect to the positive x-axis. I'll change that in a minute there. So I'm going to do this problem. Vector A is 15 angle 25. Vector B, what was it? 10 angle 82. 
and I want to find A plus B. I want to add them and see what the answer is. I'm going to make a table here that will remind me with all the pieces that I need. I can do this. It's only two, ve oh, two vectors here. The first column, so it's basically, in this case, since I only have two vectors, the top row is a header there. So this is going to have the vector in it, this column. This column is going to have the x component. And a reminder, the way you find the x component, you go x equals r times cosine theta. So just a quick reminder. And this is the y component. r times sine theta. So these are my labels. How many vectors do we have? Two. What was the first vector? I forget, 25, I mean 15 angle 25. What was the other vector? Oh, I forgot to write the 15. That's vector A. And what's vector B? 10 angle 82. Let's find the x and y component for each one. The x component for this is going to be 15 cosine 25 and let's see what that number is 15 cosine 25 13.6 the y value is 15 sine 25 6.4 or 6.34 The x component for this, 10 cosine 82, 1.39, and 10 sine of 82, 0.5. Now we did the first two steps. Write the vectors. Find the x and y component for each vector. Add all the x and y components. So let's add the x component. Let's add these numbers. 13.6 plus 1.39. What do we have? Is it 14.69? That's the sum in x. And where's the sum in y? 6 and 9, is that what, 15.94. Step number 3 is done. Add all the x component to get the result in x. Add all the y component to get the result in y. Now let's find r and theta. That's the last step. You get r by using this. You get theta by doing this. So what is r equal to? It's the square root of r sub x squared plus r sub y squared. 14.69. 
14.69 squared plus 15.94 squared So let me get my calculator and see what that number is. Fourteen point six nine squared plus fifteen point nine four squared. Twenty one point seven. Are you just adding the two numbers, the 13.6 plus 1.3? Correct. I think it's supposed to be 14.99. Yeah, yeah nine, it is 99. Thank you. The other, the other one's good? That's 99, you're right. Yep. She told me early. Now I'll go back and redo them. Thank you. I know the other one is 16.24. 16.24? Boy. I'm off today. I should use a calculator. It's okay. I just made it. So let's try these numbers. 16.24. I am the worst one, actually, with math. I should stick to the calculator there. So let's try them again. Thank you. 14.99 squared plus... 16.24 squared, 22.1. And let's get theta. Theta is the inverse tangent of r sub y over r sub x. The inverse tangent of 16.24 over 14.99. Second tangent, 16.24 uh, uh, divided by 14.99, and it comes out 47.3 degrees. The only question, do I add 180 degrees or not? Are we in the second quadrant or the third? Because if you're in the second or the third, you have to add 180. How do we know if we're in the second quadrant or the third quadrant? Angle or well, before we get this one, because we don't know. Okay. Notice we have the x component and the y component. If you were to graph them, they're both positive. If x is positive and y is positive, which quadrant are you in? First quadrant. Because r sub x is positive, that tells me it's to the right. And r sub y is what? Also positive, that tells me it's going up there. So I know I'm in the first quadrant because both of these are positive. If x was negative and y is positive, I'll be which quadrant? I'll be right here in the second one. If they're both negative, I'll be in the third quadrant. If x is positive, y is negative, I'll be in the fourth. So I know which quadrant by looking at these guys. So in this case, since I'm in the first quadrant, no addition is needed, and there's my answer. My answer is 22.1 angle, 47.3. That's what the math tells me. When we did it graphically, what was our answer? 22 angle, 47. 22.147.3. Not that bad. I'll take this any day. So there's going to be times where you ask us to like, do the graph version? Like yeah, they'll be on the homework. They'll ask you to do them graphically, and sometimes they'll say do them mathematically okay. yeah, using trig. So but you, can, you can always check your work with them. Correct. If you don't correct. Know. If you know. Even when the book doesn't, when they say do them graphically, they really cheat, they do them mathematically because they don't want to be wrong. Because notice, if you're off just a little bit, I could say 46. With the software, if you're off by 0.1, they mark it wrong. So to make sure they're not off by anything, they do a lot of times mathematically. They go, oh, the answer is this. 
but there's a problem or two where you have to draw the vectors, like the way we did, draw the first one from the tip of it, draw the second one, draw the result and show that. So they'll make you draw them actually. Now, let me take another problem. And we'll change the story here. Um, there we go. I'm going to put three vectors here. This is what's happening here. We have a lion just hunted a deer there. There's the deer. Dead. There's blood and all over. Yeah. Now, they all come running, the mommy, the babies, they all come running to try to eat that one. They're fighting over it. So we got one lion is pulling in this direction, pulling on that deer. Now, if you're an animal lover, you don't like the story there. Of a value of 200 Newton angle 30 degrees. We'll call that line one or A. Or actually lion M. M for Mufasa. Mufasa was pulling in that direction. Simba. Simba was pulling, Simba was the baby one, was pulling in this direction. There's Lion Simba. And he's a baby one, so his force was only 100 Newton. But he was pulling in this direction, or this, uh, this was the 30 degree here. I'll just put the angle there. And Simba was pulling, that's S here in case you're looking at, what is that? This angle of 20 degrees with respect to the y-axis. And who was the uncle? What's his name? Sar. Sar, yes, the mean one. He was pulling in this direction of 175. Uh oh. Now we use the S there. So was it Layla, the little one? And the wife, or was the wife? Layla, L. I think the baby one was Layla. Nala. Yeah, Nala. Lala? Nala. Nala? Na it, might be, it might be right. Nala. <laughs> N. Nala. It's a great movie. Nala was pulling in this direction. We'll give this angle 42 degrees. And if nothing breaks, they're all going to start to move. The whole group there, the deer and the lions, are going to move in one direction. So we're looking for what force, what value will equal the sum of all of these, and what's the direction of it. So I'm looking for the sum of the three vectors. What is um, the sum of Mufasa plus Simba plus Naya? We said is Naya. Nala. I forgot her name. What's the sum of the three of them? I'm going to add them all. Now we need to follow the same four steps I wrote before. And again, I'll make a table because it makes it easy. When you make a table, it remind you what you have to do. I won't say easy, but easier. Because it reminds you, you got to do this, you got to do that. This marker is not good. It has a sound to it. Let me just put it away. So this is the header of the tables, or the table. We're going to have actually three vectors. This is for vector one, Mufasa. This is for Simba. Can't remember Nada, Nadia, Nala. That's the third one. And the first column is going to have the vectors in it. The second column is going to have the x component, and the third column is the y component. So vector x component. 
Again, a quick reminder, x equals r cosine theta, y component, y equals r sine theta. Let's look at Mufasa. Here's Mufasa. Mufasa was what? 200, what's the angle? 30. Simba. Simba was what? 100, the value, and what's the angle? What is it? Very good, 110. Notice the angle has to be measured with respect to the positive x-axis. It's 20 from this line. 20 plus 90 is 110. So when I said write the vectors, that's what I meant by. Make sure your angle always measured with respect to this line if you want the math to work. And Nala there, she was 150. And what was the angle with respect to the positive x-axis? It's 180 to here, plus the 42, 222. You can use negative value, by the way, that's fine. The calculator doesn't care, but 222 is good. Now we're gonna go through the math and find the x and y component for each one. 200, cosine 30, 200, sine 30. Two hundred cosine thirty one seventy three point two two hundred sine thirty one hundred. The next one is one hundred cosine one ten one hundred sine one ten. Negative 34.2 and 100 sine 110. 93 point, how about 94? Because if you just use one decimal place, it will be 94. This one, 150. Cosine 222, 150 sine 222, minus 111.5, and the other one 150 sine 222, negative 100.4. Write the vectors, we did that. Find the x and y component for each vector, we did that. What's step number three? Add all the x values to get one number. So you add all the x value, add this number to this number. So we're going to take this number, this number, and this number, and add them. And that's the result in the x direction, which is 27.5. It's positive. The result in the y direction, we take this number, this number, and that number, and we add them. And what do we have? 93.6? Notice x is positive, y is positive, which quadrant? One. Quadrant one, I don't have to add 180. Can I get theta and r? That's the last step. r equals the square root of rx squared 
plus ry squared. ninety seven point six and theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x y is what ninety three point six x is what twenty seven point five And it doesn't matter if I'm adding 10 vectors or just one. 73.6 degrees. So the net result, I can take the three lines out and bring one lion pulling with that force in that direction. That's the net result of all three of them. So again, if this were free to move, and I'm sure it will be because it's not attached to anything, they're going to move in that direction. So if you don't want it to move at all, if you want to make sure that, that this doesn't move, so what do you do? Because it's going to go in that direction. What you need is a force pulling backward equal to that, but pulling 180 degrees backward to that, and that will stop it from moving. We do, actually, we use this process a lot in cruise ship, meaning what? When that cruise ship comes in to dock there, it's too big of a ship to to go through that narrow, uh, usually channel there to get to the docking space. They're bringing the tugboats. So you have that ship that looks like this. You got a tugboat pulling in this direction of 6,500 Newton. They pull with a lot of power. You got another tugboat pulling in this direction. Just in case that to go to the right, this will pull on it. It might be 5,600 Newton at an angle of 20 degrees. And we got another one pulling in this direction of, let's say 4,200 Newton at an angle of 30 degrees in this direction. And I got a fourth one just in case I have to go forward and it's not stopping, I don't want to ram into anything. I got one pulling in that direction of 2,800 in that direction. The question, can you get one tugboat, how big that tugboat, how big that engine must be, and what direction you need to go to equal these four of them put together? You really never want to have just one. You can get one to pull it, but if they start to move this direction, and you're pulling in that direction, and start to go this way, who's going to stop you? Nothing. So that's why we have all these tugboats pulling intentionally. If they start to drift this way, this one starts to pull on it. If it starts to go up, this one starts to pull on it this way. If it starts to go too fast, it's going to ram into that um, railing there. This one starts to pull back. And they guide it in, then disconnect these, and they park it. When it's ready to go, they do the same thing. So let's find having these four. What, we'll make that the last one, then we'll take a break. So what value, we'll call them A, B, C, D. This is tech board A. This is B, this is C, this is D. Can you find the equivalent of these four tugboats? So again, we just go to the table and we have four vectors. So I gotta put four lines, the header, that's five rows.
Everyone's good copying this? So let's, let's put five rows there, in th always three columns, vector x component, y component. So the columns always three. The rows is one more than the number of vectors. So we have four vectors, I need five rows. The first one is the header. That's vector one. Vector two, or A, B, C, and D. Vector or vectors x component. Again, just a reminder, I always write the equation on the top. You do that by going x cosine theta and the y component. It's always y equals r sine theta. Let's write the four vectors. The first tugboat, tugboat A. Notice the direction of it, 6,500. 6, what direction? What's the direction? Zero. Same as 360. So angle zero. Tugboat B is what? 5,600, and what's the angle? 20. Tugboat C, it's 4,200, and what's the angle? C, this one. 330, you mean? Or negative 30 degrees, you can go this way. That's negative 30 or 330 if you go that way. Doesn't really matter. Negative because you're going clockwise. And tugboard D, the last one, how big? 2,800. And what's the angle? 180. Very good. Once we write them with respect to the positive x axis, so really we're making this the positive x axis right through the center of that ship there, the hole. So I got my vectors now. I got to find the x and y component for each one. 6,500, cosine zero, cosine of zero is one, you end up with 6,500. 6,500, sine of zero, sine of zero, zero, that's a zero. Fifty six hundred cosine twenty degrees. It is twenty six sixty two. If you want to carry to a significant digit, I mean fifty two sixty two I get. If you want to carry to a significant digit, that's what? Fifty three hundred. If you're carrying two significant digits. If you don't care about significant digits, then you go, that's what? Like, I'm not really interested in significant digits. I want to get the real answer. 52, 62. And this one is what? 5,600 sine 20. One nine one five. Now tug board C forty two hundred cosine negative thirty. And three six three seven.
the y value 4200 sine negative 30. negative 2100 and the last one 2800 cosine 180 which is negative 2800 and 2800 sine of 180 which is zero So we calculate the x and y value for each one. Let's add them all in the x direction. That's the result in x. Let's see what we have. Take this number, add to it this, add to it this, add to it that one. 6,500 plus 52,62 plus 3,6,3,7 minus 2,800. 12,599. The result in the y direction, 1915. You add these four numbers. Minus 2100, which is what? Negative 185. X is positive, Y is negative. Which quadrant? To the right and down. Try again. To the right, if you're looking at your axes, to the right and down. To the right and down. Fourth. Fourth, because X is positive, Y is negative. X is positive, you go to the right, Y is negative, you go down, you're in the fourth quadrant. So we don't have to add, so this is fourth quadrant. So you don't have to add um, 180. When you're in the first quadrant, x is positive and y is positive. When you're in the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. Anytime x is negative, Let me just write this because I can't write and talk at the same time. Anytime x is negative, you really have to add 180 because you're going to be in the sec second or third quadrant. So if this value is negative, always add 180 to your answer because you're going to be in this quadrant or that quadrant. If x is positive, you're off the hook. That's one easy way to remember that. So what's r equal to? It's the square root of one, two, five, nine, nine squared plus negative 185 squared. And is 12,600. And theta is going to be the inverse tangent of the y value. The y value is negative 185 over the x value, which is 1, 2, 5, 9, 9. It's negative one degree, point eight four. So basically, you almost need just one tugboat that big of an engine to pull with that much power horizontally. Negative point eight four is really not much of an angle. You're going to pull in that direction, just one degree below that line. And that will give me the net result as the four of them put together. Okay.